Welcome, welcome back to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show, a show we like to call the Mick Report. Happy Friday, Pat, even though it's actually Thursday, isn't it? Yep, Thursday. We are recording on Thursdays because you are going to be traveling tomorrow. Yep, I am heading off to Southern California. I'm going to go see my son. And uh, so I will be gone until probably Tuesday, it looks like. So I'm going to head back probably Monday the 11th. And uh, so I thought we'd record today because we've got um, some interesting numbers I want to look at and compare to headlines. I always have fun with that. But yeah. can I start with you for a second? Because it was a really good week for rates last week, and it looks like it's still continuing that trend for now. I see here mortgage rates 7.04 on the average. Yep. Yeah. Well, we've got the trend started here. I mean, um, look, this is the last quarter. This is the last six months. We had a peak like October 19th, October 20th. I mean, today, <clears throat> yeah, the bond market was pretty, pretty benign. I mean, obviously waiting for the numbers tomorrow, the BLS numbers tomorrow, Bureau, Bureau of Labor Statistics. But the 10-year been at 4.15. I mean, we had a peak of around five. We come back about 85 basis points on the U.S. Treasury in the last month. So that just, you know, it just goes to show you how quick the market can kind of turn. And obviously, you and I were talking about it. I mean, the 10-year bond is down 85 basis points, and the Federal Reserve hasn't done anything with the rates right now. Yeah, that's the real disconnect. But I'm seeing these headlines and agents grabbing it like it's the gospel saying, we're going to have six rate cuts next year. There's, there's no basis to to believe that that's the case. I mean, mm -hmm. there may have been one or two pundits, but, um, you know, I mean, you and I are, have no idea how many rate cuts we're going to see next year. We've got to see what the jobs numbers are uh, tomorrow or today, which is Friday. And then uh, then you've got CPI, and that seems to be calming down. But, yep. um, you know, it's just impossible to say, oh, we're going to six more cuts. So it is. It is. I mean, and, but the thing of it is, is uh, – We've alluded to, I mean, and we've talked about this in, you know, some different uh, sessions, um, is that, you know, the Fed has got it periods, obviously, where they've got their certain meetings, whether they raise rates or cut rates. And that's, you know, month by month. But you've got the market, the daily market that tells you kind of what's going on. I mean, you know, people can refute, say, oh, this or that about the market, but you just saw the 10 year bond go down 85 basis points in less than 30 days. So, yeah, without the, the feds doing a thing day, like you said. So. The market is a day to day um, mirror of what's really going on. So, you can kind of watch in that like, when I when I try to track some, you know, when I've got a contract under, you know, a contract and uh, have to lock a rate, you know, that's what I watch for. And, and, and what happened the last 30, 40 days with bonds? Have they been rising the last 30 days? Are we going to see a little pullback in the next two weeks? Um, that's that's the type of you know advice that I try to really hone in on people as far as give them an extra you know added benefit rather than just saying, hey, I, okay, I got this contract, we got a thirty day close, okay, I'll lock you for thirty days. No, I, I I repeated this several times over the last couple of years, but if rates have been going up the last ten or fifteen days. It behooves me to say that, you know what, we got a trend that's probably going to, we're going to probably see a pullback here. And this is, that's what the market will give you on a day-to-day -day basis. And, but overall, this trend that we're seeing right now, not to get too long-winded as I always do, but this trend in the last 30 days has been a good trend. And I, I said a couple of weeks ago, I think I'm just going to go on a limb and say that I think October 20th, 19th, 20th, we're kind of a, at least in the near short term, I'm saying next three to four months, I think that was a, the highest rates have been, and you've got the Fed coming out, reading all what I'm reading, hearing what I'm seeing, talking to people, and just hearing the you know the experts on TV. You know, you kind of you put together enough. You know, you listen to 20 experts, you kind of kind of get your own uh, theory of what's going on. I think the Feds are done cutting, but they're going to keep rates right here because I I just in my mind behind the closed door, I can't believe that they're going to say. Well, at the first sign of inflation, we'll drop rates, but if they go up, we'll raise them again. I mean, that that would that would <clears throat> send a signal that they don't know what the hell they're doing. I think they'd rather just keep them here and they'd rather be a little bit longer 
<coughs> keeping rates here a little bit longer, eventually cut them. But if they cut them sooner, too soon, they're going to be in a real pickle, I think. Well, and we're, we're starting to feel that right here now in our market in that, you know, that the, the rate hikes have already been there. They've been out there for a while and it takes, you know, you had that initial shock where everybody tried yeah. to list their homes and sell them. But now the dust is settling, but so are sales. So we've still got the affordability problem. So as the, the central bank and the traders look in the rearview mirror, they, they don't just look at housing. But what I'm showing here is it is affecting our housing market, and especially right here where you can see that the demand index and the supply index have finally met. There's been a gap there, and that's the one that I've really been watching because the last time that they crossed over like this was when we started seeing some price decreases. And, of course, here's the big one where supply went up here and demand fell to the floor. Um, and then here's the opposite where we had the silly season of 2020-2021. So I think in the looking at data and are the rate cuts having an effect on housing, they definitely are. Now, here's the demand index here showing it's at 68.8. But I want to tease something up here a second before I run through some of these numbers. And that is, um, I saw an article and it said here, Sellers are cutting home prices at a record level. Here's what's driving the trend. So that's a that's a headline. So I thought I'd kind of dive in and go, well, are they cutting prices at a record level here in Arizona? Uh, because if somebody's going to spit out a number, you know, I, I want to see it. So I looked, and this is where we're at right here, 1,809. So if you just say, well, here's where we were most recently. That's not cutting prices at a record level mm -hmm. for us. Now, mm -hmm. it's higher, but for us, it's not a record level. So then I got kind of wonky here, and I said, well, let's take a look at extremes, okay? So if I go back here, and I, there's price changes, and I look here at sales price to list price ratio today, it's 97.2. How is that in our market compared to history? And I go to the extremes here and I look at, and I'll get my red pen out here and say average sales price percentage to list. Average is 97.57. So that's not an alarming number seeing where we're at today, right? Mm -hmm. No. So we're sitting at 97.2. That's average. So there's no need for people to panic and go, oh, wow, I got to drop my prices. It's really bad out there. It's It feels bad compared to where you were. Now, the other one here is listing success rate. It's gone way down to 63.2. So let's look at our extremes again and find listing success rate. And it is right down here. Come on, Red Pen, you can do it. There we go. Listing success rate. 69.1 is average. And what did we say? We're at 63.2. So we don't have really any alarming numbers out there when we compare it to our historical averages. The only thing that's really low is our weekly sales. So if you look at the seven-day moving average here, Pat, you can see how low we are. Yep, uh, We're still at 2,200. Our new listings are now starting to fall off. The closer we get to Christmas, both these numbers fall off the face of the earth. So I feel, and I think you feel the same way, that you know we're not going to see a drastic move on rates either up or down um, in January. And we will see more listings because everybody pumps more listings out there. But I don't think the buyers are going to follow them. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think you know, some, a, little bit. a little bit, I mean, with the relief in rates, I mean, purchase applications increased 35% week over week. Um, they're still down, I think, believe seven down 17% from year over year. But that decrease in rates brought out people. I mean, like I said, purchase applications, they said, in, uh, Barry has said that they increased by 35% week over week. So, I mean, um, it just feels like we've been in this doldrums the last this last year. And I believe 
you know, once again, going back to our theory, when rates come down, you see, you know, we saw that demand yeah. get pulled out of the woodwork. I, I just got to believe with this kind of sitting and waiting type of period that we've had the last uh, six, eight, you know, nine months, you know, I think it's just building up. I might be wrong, but I just I feel that as though if somebody wants to buy a house, if rates do drop, you're going to have those people that have been waiting in the weeds, just kind of maybe saving up a little bit more money or paying off more debt and they're ready to go. Because obviously if rates do come down, um, you know, forever, I saw something on, on the internet, so it must be true. Uh, <laughs> that, that for every 1% drop in, um, you know, rates, it increases the amount of qualified buyers out there by a couple of million people. You know, I think it was like two or 3 million people qualify. So, I just, you know, obviously the rates have been fairly on a positive scale here. I just, once again, I think uh, the last couple of years, I believe this market's been going in these eight to 12 month cycles, you know, 14 month cycles, you know, down and then up. And we've been in this crap cycle with rates going up. And I think, you know, the end of October is going to kind of spell, I think the fire is, is, the fire is dimming on the Federal Reserve. Now, you know, they're, now it's like everybody kind of knows, you know, we went from zero to 5% in the, uh, you know, treasury, you yeah. know, the, uh, and it's just, that was a brutal move. And I think we're kind of toward the tail end. So I think my gut says, and you know, it's, they're going to sit here. The Fed's going to sit here. They're not going to make any moves, but they're going to keep the pedal on the metal. But eventually down the road, they will cut. And, you know, once again, if they do cut, if there's a feeling that they're going to cut, I think there's like an 80%. I had a chart. Uh, I should have pulled it up, but I know it's, it increasingly goes up from 60%, like in March to 80 or 90% by June that they're going to cut. Well, you're going to have, you're going to have the interest rates, the market, daily market's going to feed into that one or two months before. Well, I read a comment the other day, I think it was yesterday going, well, of course rates are going down. It's an election year. Yeah, that's yeah, that's no. just uh, Trump you know. appointed Chairman Powell. Well, Trump Trump does not like Powell anymore. He's 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 pissed all over his parade a couple of times. Yeah, but, but 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 I don't think there's any direction that says, well, um, let's help the current administration. They stay completely yep. out of that. Now I may yep. be very naive in saying that, but you know, I didn't see anybody come in and bail out Jimmy Carter and uh yep. So I think I'm sure there's some there, you know, we never know what's really going on behind the iron black iron curtain, but you know, there's probably probably naive to say it's not a lit, you know, something. I'm there. willing to bet that if you tracked rate hikes and rate cuts on election year, oh yeah, and yeah, you I ran agree. it out as a trend that you can't find that no. it swings one way or the other. Yeah. Uh, before an election. I just don't, I don't see it. And I, and I remember the 2016 election, I saw this one lady and I was putting up open house signs. She goes, Oh, I'm waiting till after the election. I said, well, what are you waiting for? Do you think prices are going to go way down or way up? Well, it all depends on who gets in the office. I, I, that, that makes no sense. <laughs> it's you can elect somebody in November. Trust me. In December, nothing changed. Now, the stock market will wiggle around. It always does, yeah, depending yeah. on who gets in there. But housing doesn't. It's not yeah. like, oh, my gosh, we elected a Republican or we elected a Democrat. Listing spiked today after the election. It doesn't happen. And so <laughs> I don't I don't see that. What Now, I've been kind of on my, um, not, I don't want to call it a soapbox, but encouraging people that if you're thinking of listing in January, um, that consider listing before Christmas because there's nothing out there. I'm listing a condo this week. I'm going to, actually, it's going to be, it'll be live next weekend uh, before Christmas. And what I told my clients, I, they said, should we wait an hour, list an hour, wait. And I said, there's nothing else out there. Yeah. Two miles from your place, there are no condos in your price range, zero. Now, I don't know if that's going to change in January. It might not, but yeah. it's going to be under 200,000. And I said, there aren't any. Yeah. And it, it's yeah. a two bedroom. It's in, you know, by, by central Phoenix. And, and I said, you know, we don't have any harm in going early. So if we list before Christmas, and we don't get a buyer. That's fine. But, um, you know, strike while the iron's hot and inventory's low. And I think you'll, 
I think we might be pleasantly surprised Yeah, because it's all about how much competition you've got out there when you're putting your home on the market and it all depends on the neighborhood. So is there, when, is there any economic news next week that you think may move rates? No, I think, I think, well, actually the, the, uh, well, the CPI numbers are coming out December 12th. So, um, and the feds, I think are a quiet period right now, as far as uh, what you know, their comments, I believe, but you know, BLS reports coming out tomorrow. So and I think the CPI number in December next week is going to be, obviously that's going to be a, you know, another big number to see where, you know, you, once you start putting a couple of months together and as far as where inflation is, the trend is going, I, I just, you know, these, these, these numbers that they put out that, you know, I'm just going to speak off the top, you know, just off the, off the cuff, but, you know, you, you and I both know just from a generally speaking this, you know, the CPI getting around or the inflation numbers be, getting around 3% inflation, the real inflation is really higher. Yeah, it really is. I mean, let's cut the, cut the chase. I mean, it's, you cannot tell me Joe and Mary Smith, you can tell them that all oh, inflation's at 3% when they're going in and they're seeing grocery bill, up 20, you know, I, I think honestly, the real inflation rate is 15 or 20 percent. Well, you know? the three percent's on top of the six percent, which is on top of the nine percent. Yeah, yeah, those, 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 those inflation numbers never went away. Yeah, they're just not piling on as quickly. So yeah. that's how you need. I mean, nobody's going in the grocery store now and marking things down. Yeah, no, and they won't. It, no, and you know, I it's just um, so. This is embedded for a while. I mean, I like the word. I like where rates are going. Um, you know, overall, I read a statistic that only two percent of the homes have negative negative equity right now. Um, and like you said, I think the more people we wait, you know, with rates where they're at, um, you know, once again, it's. I, I just see where the purchase applications went up thirty five percent when rates start coming down. That just tells me that if rates come down any further, you're gonna you're gonna see this. Supply demand equation on on homes, like you said, um, flip rates well, today. The, the 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 cost for a rate now has come down considerably too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, right now, I mean, back here, I mean, back at you know about a month ago, we were seven and three quarters, seven and seven eighths. I'm, I, I guarantee a bank, some retail banks were probably eight, eight and an eighth, eight and a quarter. I mean, if you're at eight and an eighth, uh, the you're getting a credit now of sixty eight hundred dollars. I know back. Uh, about a month ago, I was at about seven seven eighths with a cost of about twelve hundred dollars. That's now a credit of fifty four hundred dollars. So that's a sixty eight hundred dollar difference in about thirty days. So we've gone from seven and seven eighths down to, uh, you know, this now this is just a preface. This this is a four hundred seventy five thousand dollar purchase, five percent down, seven eighty credit score. But I mean, you know, this is. This is and this is what I show clients when I'm doing a loan. I mean, I, I will tell them, and that's what I, I I love to be transparent. You know, when you call a call center, uh, you know, like let's say ones that starts with an R or Q, um, they they're not going to tell you. They're going to tell you, okay, I get you six and a half, and they'll charge you three points to get it or six and a quarter. You know, I, I just I don't like I like being transparent. And say, hey, here we are, Mr. Jones, uh, at at 6.875 is a cost of $1,400. Uh, if you want six and three quarters, it's $3,300. So, I mean, you know, you choose your poison. So right now we're looking at rates at about 6.875 for a cost of $1,400. So it basically dropped a whole point in the last 30 days. Well, more now, importantly, when you look at this chart though, Pat, I mean, it's easy to, when you're getting ready to write your offer, Make sure you go through these numbers first before you write your offer. Because let's just say that you say, wait, I can get 6.625 with, what'd you say that's? Uh, uh, six, well, that would be a cost of $6,300. Okay. So you're wondering how much um, seller contributions you want to ask for. Yeah. Then then th use this as your guide. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, well, and also, know, too, if you want to do a two, one, if you're, if you're, if you're getting seller contributions where it's eight, nine, ten thousand $10,000, you know, we could do, you know, you could do, if you do that two, one buy down right now, uh, you start, let's say, let's just say it's 6.875 for 14 hour dollar cost, but two, one buy down would cost you say 10 grand. You can get to 4.875 with that two, one buy down that this, that this rate chart doesn't even show 4.875 yet. But, yeah. um, you know, I think, you know, looking at the rates, I mean, they've come down. I mean, we came down 
like you said, from the high high sevens, low eights. Um, you know, and just obviously looking at payment at six seven point eight seven five, your principal and interest is thirty two seventy two, right? Uh, and then if you got down to say six six nine nine, you're looking at a difference of two hundred seventy three dollars a month difference just in that thirty days. Now rates coming down i think they're not going to they're going they went up a lot faster than, than they're going to come down i think if we do have a federal reserve that is accommodative and just at least keeping rates where they're at you guess you might see rates obviously you know react to it i think right now looking at this rate chart if you want to pull this back up i mean you know for us to get down to you know the mid sixes we're we're looking at probably another you know, we got another another point, point and a half to get down to six and a quarter, six. It's going to be a little bit harder to get down here because we it came down pretty quick. I think it's going to be a little bit harder to get down in the low sixes, high fives. But I think eventually we could get there. You know, I've heard well, a lot of people saying that I'm seeing prognosticators saying, you know, we could see, you know, I'm just saying because obviously I'm, you know, hearing and listening to people high fives. Well. Here, here's my other observation too, because you're looking at how much it costs to buy that rate down to a yeah. To certain, well, um, it's not going to cost the builders that much money anymore to, to buy rates down. If they continue to buy them down at the dollar amount that they are now, man, they're going to be off, be able to offer some really sweet rates. Yeah, but I don't think um, they will. But uh, they'll probably be backing off to just kind of stay where they're because they they know what rate is moving the houses right mm -hmm. now. They're, they're not hurting. So, so their costs are not going to go up and they'll still be able to offer a lot of incentives. But when you, the buyer going out to get a resale one, uh, I encourage you to, to take a look at the, at the rate chart that Pat just showed you and say, well, I, I don't know what kind of concessions to ask for yet. How much are closing costs going to be? Uh, when you say rate buy down, what can I get for that? And then you can say, well, look, if you can get them to contribute $10,000 and we can take $8,000 of that to buy down the rate, Here's what you're looking at. And mm -hmm. then, then you know what to put in the contract. Yeah. Instead of just stepping out there blindly. So just uh, a get a little bit of strategery. I think uh, that was Bush that called it that. Uh, <laughs> strategery. Well, you know, I, you know, I pride myself on trying to, you know, um, you know, I'm not perfect. You know, I'm, I'm only a human being, but I, you know, I'm talking to a first time home buyer when I'm talking to any buyer. I mean, I pride myself on, you know, telling us straight facts. I mean, I, you know, my memory is really crappy, so I can't remember what I said. So I really just have to try to tell you what I know today. And, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I to me, the more I can be tra more transparent, I can be to people and say, hey, this is what you're getting. That's why, I, you know, I ask people if they want to if they're doing a loan, give me a call. I can, you know, compare it. I'll tell them if they're getting a great deal or, you know, a decent, deal, whatever, because I'm telling you right now, there's, there's some companies out there that don't even. They'll give you a great rate, but then you're look, you don't look at the small print that on the loan estimate, and all of a sudden you're getting charged three points, like 18 grand for this buy down. Yeah, when, you need to ask that up front. When they give you a rate, you've got to ask what what's what's the fee? Yeah. Yeah. Because it really sounds sweet on the phone. Or, oh, yeah. You're, not, you're probably not even talking to them on the phone. You're just typing yeah. back and forth and they go, Oh, that sounds great. Well, yeah, yeah. the average guy does like, not oh, do this yeah, every they day. Even, they won't even see that fee. You know, the average guy does not do this every day, and I don't expect them to know this stuff, but uh, it just really irks my my behind when, um, I, you know, treat people the way you want to be treated. You know, I, I like you said, I had an agent about a month and a half ago. I showed him the breakdown. He had the client and the uh, client on the phone with a Zoom or on a, a conference call, and we did a, a joint call, and I, I showed him. I sent him the rates. He goes, my God, nobody's ever showed me this before. I'm like – it's not hard. I mean, I can, I can show you all my different lenders where, you know, and there's not, there's some lenders yeah. that I don't go to because sometimes a lot of lenders will, you know, it's like advertising, they'll advertise the lowest rate, but they got shitty service. <laughs> so they, yeah. the only way to bring clients in is by, you know, by advertising a rate that's maybe a quarter, a point lower or half a point, you know, whatever, you know, well, just, they're saying I can get you this rate. I just can't say when. <laughs> yeah. I just can't tell you when I'm going to close it. So, you know, there's, there's certainly a balance of time. When I looked at my lo list alone, you know, lenders out there, you know, there's some lenders at the top that I'm like, Nope, I wouldn't touch them with a 10 foot pole. Nope. I've heard from other, cause we have 
over 75 loan officers at our company, we chime in, you know, we'll send out a note. How's this lender looking like today is, or this week? Are they, you know, are they, because there's lenders will switch, they'll change their service levels depending on how, how busy they are. Yeah. And we yeah. had, we had this one lender that was terrible two years ago. I mean, absolutely just hard to work with, but all of a sudden Andy Price, the owner of our company said, he sent out an email saying, he goes, these guys have turned it around. They're, they're closing stuff quick. I close it, you know, deal in 10 days, 11 days. And so, you know, we get feedback from there. So it's good to get, get that. Every lender has got a little bit different service levels. So well, that's good to know too. Cause you, you, uh, um, you can't just chase the number cause you got to get the job done. Yeah. So now this yep. builder that I'm going through, um, uh, we're closing next, next week. We signed the documents yesterday. Um, meeting with the actual builder, the guy that put the, you know, the superintendent out there, he was, he was terrific. And the agent, when he showed up doing the walkthrough with us, knew everything about the home and they were terrific. I just wish he would answer his phone when I call him, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, I just, it's, and I'll call him with a compliment and say, Hey, you know, give me a call. I want to talk about this for just a quick second. If you got a chance, he, he won't call me back. And when we went to get the contract, um, they, the, the builder, the, the company, they, they didn't want to write any contracts until they had the features package done. You know, here, here's what kind of tile you can get, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's what I was told, but it turns out they didn't want to write the contract because they include the features that are in your unit in the contract. And they were just dragging their feet and we, we kind of wanted to get the rate locked and I'm texting them. I'm calling them. I'm emailing them. What can we do with this? Have you heard anything? And after a week, I looked up his license and I went to one office and found out he was at the builder's office. And finally he said, uh, yeah, meet me here at one And I walked in, I looked at him and smiled and said, you look like a big guy. Who do we have to kill to get this done? <laughs> and we sat down at the table and we got it all, all written out. But boy, if you just pick up the phone, it goes so much easier. Yeah, it, and, uh, it just drives me absolutely nuts. So, yeah. well, Pat, look, have a super weekend. I will be in sunny California. I actually go to, I'm hoping my son will be able to take me to the studios, animation studios in Burbank, but it's a, a weekend. Yeah. So I, I doubt if I'm going to get to see that, but I will get to see his own private studio at his house. So that'll, that'll be fun. I'm going to looking forward to having a good time. So you can I tell, will, well, have a good time. And uh, I'm sure you can tell it's getting cool in Arizona here. I got my, uh, my limited limited edition price mortgage jacket on. So. Yeah, it was cool, Pat. It was 80 today. Give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good one, pal. All right. Take care, everybody. Yeah. Bye.